Hello, this is Shackleton the Explorer, and uh, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, apart from getting lots of cat hair in my mouth, everything's going great. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk all about a new paper that was just published on uh, yesterday, on uh, June 3rd, and uh, it's about it's called Interacting Tipping Elements Increase the Risk of Climate Domino Effects Under Global Warming. In the past, I've often used the term the climate casino, and that sort of refers to cities or locations uh, on the planet where we get suddenly some sort of extreme weather event, like torrential rains leading to you know, massive flooding in a particular city, or, you know, a massive uh, superstorm causing storm surge and then destruction of buildings from high winds, whether it be, you know, a hurricane or a typhoon or cyclone or, you know, large, large uh, storms. And, uh, you know, and there's other regions that are undergoing tremendous uh, drought. So, you know, it's, there's so little rainfall, the soil has all dried up and, you know, there's tremendous drought. And the only thing keeping agriculture going is um, irrigation. So, you know, those, you know, we live in the climate casino, you know, and any of us can experience those sort of things. And some areas are getting persistent extreme weather events and other areas, you know, more, more infrequent events. But now I'm going to talk more about the overall climate system, how the overall system is changing you know, and we think very much in a linear fashion. We don't think too much in a nonlinear fashion. And we have a lot of difficulty understanding the exponential function. So any exponential change, you know, we just don't uh, understand, you know, how it can take off, how it can accelerate so much. So there's a lot of different uh, elements in the climate system that can tip over. So to a completely different state. So talking about things like, uh, you know, massive ice loss on the Greenland ice shelf, uh, massive ice loss on Antarctica, um, you know, release of methane causing, uh, you know, huge temperature rises, the slowing down or stopping, complete stalling of the, um, ocean circulation system, the AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, collapse of the Amazon rainforest, um, and there's numerous other ones. So, you know, the cryosphere, when we talk about the cryosphere changes, that's things like the Greenland ice shelf uh, shedding huge amounts of, of uh, ice, melting, raising global sea levels, or the same thing with Antarctica and Western Antarctic ice shelf. Is the, is the part of Antarctica that's mostly exposed. There's also the Eastern Ant Antarctic. Um, and, uh, you know, but that's considered to be a bit more stable. And I've talked about the Amazon rainforest. You know, those are part, it's part of the biosphere, but we're also getting boreal forests uh, die back. We're getting wildfires. We're getting coral reefs uh, collapsing. Those are all biosphere tipping points. In the cryosphere, we're also getting you know, a huge reduction of mountain glaciers and melting. So what this paper does that just came out is it looks at the physical interaction between four main climate tipping elements. So the Greenland ice sheet, the Western Antarctic ice sheet, the AMOC, and the Amazon rainforest. Now, it's a good paper. It looks at the connections and interactions. It looks at the effect, the sort of domino effect. So if one of those elements tips, what happens to the other elements. So it tries to look at the time um, scale on which these things can tip and the strength of the interactions and so on. But, you know, right up front, I have to kind of fault the paper because I think it, I mean, it's a good first attempt, but they really need to treat the Arctic sea ice as a separate tipping element because you know, it's the Arctic sea ice collapse that then causes the Greenland ice sheet to start collapsing, right? So you need to consider the Arctic sea ice. They should also consider 
the boreal forests and the coral reefs and the, you know, all of these other things and put them into a much more inclusive model. And of course, methane. Methane is not mentioned at all. And there's vast reserves, as we know, of methane, especially on the eastern uh, Siberian Arctic shelf. You know, and there's also lots of methane on land in the Yudoma Peninsula, Yudoma lands of the of Arctic uh, Siberia. And uh, those have huge risk of tipping over and releasing huge amounts of methane um, and tipping up tipping us into a much warmer world. So there's lots of things like that that are left out. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about the paper because it's sort of a significant um, it's a good peer-reviewed paper, and it does try to put, you know, look at the climate domino effects, and it does suggest further research in some of these other areas that, that I've talked about. So, um, you know, as global warming progresses, of course, the risk increases of crossing critical thresholds for one or more tipping elements in the climate system. So for each of these tipping elements, we can estimate sort of a time scale um, over which they can tip, and uh, the temperature, the global mean temperature above pre-industrial that they'll tip at. Now, they don't define pre-industrial in this paper directly, but I'm sure they're talking about the 1880 to 1910 time frame. And of course, if you want to relate that to the original pre-industrial period of 1750, you need to add uh, 0 0.3 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, you know, the, the AMOC, of course, is part of the global circulation system. You know, it's how heat is transferred from low latitudes like the equator to the poles. Um, and it's in the northern hemisphere, of course, the, the, uh, the AMOC. And then there's also a version in the Pacific. And there's also the southern hemisphere currents, which aren't discussed too much. But there's also the atmospheric circulation. And a large tipping point is when the jet streams are so wavy that they carry tremendous amounts of heat up into the Arctic and bring tremendous amounts of cold air that's remaining in the Arctic down to lower latitudes. And we're seeing that happen as well. So there's lots of these complications. Uh, but they look at kind of a conceptual network approach, they call it. They look at the critical temperature thresholds of these tipping elements, the four that, I've, that they discuss, the interaction strengths and the structure of the interactions, you know, the processes that result in these interactions between the different tipping elements. And then they do a large simulation, computer simulation, and they run it many, many times. And they take the result of each runs and put it together in what they call a, a large ensemble so repeated simulations, and they use a Monte Carlo approach. So just think of Monte Carlo, the gambling, right? The, you know, you try to model randomness um, by just doing multiple runs and seeing the results and doing statistics on the results. You know, think of, uh, you know, the best example of a Monte Carlo simulation is, is uh, the drunken walk. So, you know, if you start at a center point and you have an equal probability of going uh, you know, uh, a 25% a, a probability of going this way or down or across or across this way. And if you start at the center and you do these random, each point is random, right? You end up doing what is called a random walk and you can do statistics on it. And you model that with Monte Carlo simulation. So it's to do with the randomness effect. So what the study shows is the, the ice, and I'll go over the paper in great detail, but in general, um, you know, the ice sheets are the linchpins of the climate system. Um, and uh, already, um, you know, with the present temperature rise that we've had, uh, we've probably passed the tipping point for parts of Greenland. Um, and uh, as you go up in higher temperature, there's more and more chance of these tipping points taking us to, to new states. So um, the, you know, if we had a global, um, you know, up to, you know, global uh, change with all of these tipping points, um, adding cumulatively in a domino sort of effect, cascading effect, you know, could they take us to a hothouse state? Okay, so 
And uh, also, it is possible that when one of these tipping points is crossed, that it can cause stability in the in the climate system in some other tipping points. So, you know, I'll, I'll, the paper goes into all of these details. So I think I'll get right into the uh, details. But the key factor I want to emphasize is that one of the main results is that for global warming up to two degrees Celsius, the tipping occurred in 61% of all the simulations that were done in the ensemble. So in 39% of the cases, there was no tipping uh, point crossed, but in 61% of the modeling, and this is just for global warming up to two degrees Celsius, which we're rapidly approaching. Now, of that, of that 61% of the simulations that involved tipping, the 22% of the total was just an individual element tipping, most often, you know, the Greenland ice sheet. But, it, but some of the other elements would tip without the Greenland ice sheet going in the simulations. Cascading tipping with two elements, at least, of the four tipping was 21%, happened in 21% of the simulations. Cascading with three elements tipping 15% of the simulations. And cascading with four elements, 3%. Okay, so if you add that 3 and 15 and 21 and 22, you get the 61% of all of the simulations that uh, had some sort of tipping, whether it be one element up to four elements. Of course, as you go to more and more elements tipping, the chances are lower, but they're non-zero. Okay, if the warming is just one degree Celsius, then you often get the tipping from the Greenland ice sheet and not from the other ones. With the temperature, global warming, uh, temperature above three degrees Celsius, there's most of the thresholds of the individual tipping elements is crossed, so the cascading effect is less frequent. And then the tipping elements can be divided into initiators, which uh, trigger the cascading tipping, the domino effect, if you like, the followers, which is the last element in the tipping chain, and the mediators, which the, are the elements in between. So basically, Greenland ice sheet was the trigger. Um, Antarctic ice sheet, the West Antarctic ice sheet, also a trigger, but sometimes a, and, 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 uh, a mediator. The follower was usually the, uh, the uh, Amazon rainforest collapse, or AMOC. And the mediator was mostly the AMOC because the AMOC connects the hemispheres. Okay, so so those are the key uh, the key factors, and I'm going to go into the details of the of the paper. Okay, so this paper is open source. Okay, this is one of the key figures in the paper, but I'll, you know I'll come back to this in just a second. Okay, so. Here's the title, it's Interacting Tipping Elements Increase the Risk of Climate Domino Effects Under Global Warming. So it was just, uh, it just came out, it was just published online June 3rd, 2021, which is yesterday, so it's just hot off the, the press. Okay, so as, as basically, you know, as global warming progresses at faster and faster rates, there's an increased risk that one or several tipping elements in the climate system might cross a critical threshold that would result in severe consequences for the global climate, for ecosystems and human societies. We know that ecosystems are being hammered. You know, biodiversity is reducing and we're getting, you know, mass extinctions of species more and more often happening. You know, as we go to a much warmer world, there's less um, tolerance for, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not as conducive to supporting life. So we're getting huge problems with biodiversity loss, et cetera. And of course, human societies are being, you know, our infrastructure is being torn apart, apart by extreme weather events. You know, as temperatures rise, it becomes more and more difficult to grow food and will be affected um, it, mostly by, uh, you know, a failing uh, global food supply leading to global famine. Um, but it's the, so these underlying processes are fairly well understood, but it's unclear how their interactions might impact the overall stability of the Earth climate system. Okay, so they use state-of-the-art Earth system models, and they run them repeatedly to generate ensembles of data and simulate what's going on. So I'm going to continue this 
in a second video. Thank you for listening.